Within the pharmaceutical industry, clean rooms play a big role in the research and manufacturing of medicines, vaccines, and the production of other sterile medical products. For that reason, clean room requirements for the pharmaceutical industry are strictly enforced by the United States Food and Drug Administration. This helps to ensure that the products we get for our health won't impose a dangerous risk to us. There are many do's and don'ts in a clean room environment, but maintaining the air quality is an absolute must. The monitoring system required by the FDA ensures that pharmaceutical companies test for airborne particles within their labs before, during, and after production. One of the most well-known requirements for pharmaceuticals is the ISO standard. The ISO standard determines protocols for air cleanliness, tests, design, operation, and much more. Clean rooms are classified according to the number and size of particles permitted per volume of air, so it's crucial that you understand how your clean room ranks so that you can achieve the best results for your clean room activity. The FDA also prohibits certain items and activities within the clean room. For example, Jewelry should not be worn while working in the clean room. Another major thing to avoid is wearing cosmetics. Makeup, eyeliner, aftershave, and many other chemicals can easily contaminate the product. Beyond this, workers should wear special gowns and always interlock the clean room doors to maintain air integrity. Other variables include observing the temperature, humidity, electrostatic discharge, and the noise levels of your clean room. These are just a few of the many clean room requirements for pharmaceuticals. With something as complex as a clean room, the design of such an isolated space can get expensive to build and operate. Clean rooms must be laid out in the order in which people enter from the outside, usually as a person moves from room to room. The clean room can only increase one ISO level at a time. Airlocks and transition rooms are used to create buffer zones along the different levels of cleanliness as people enter into the clean room area. This process will help prevent dirt and debris found on skin and clothing from being carried into the room. Entrance and exit routes are also required to be separate to prevent cross-contamination. One of the greatest causes of contamination in a clean room exists on the floor, since pollutants tend to travel downward. Selecting the right flooring is important when looking to maintain compliance with GMP standards. Flooring should be resistant to chemicals and solvents, otherwise corrosive solutions used for washing the clean room can cause damage. The flooring should also be free of cracks because bacterial matter could accumulate within them. Finally, the right texture on the clean room floor should help to reduce the risk of slipping and falling. The biggest thing to keep in mind when planning your layout is the flow of people and materials. Hiring a professional laboratory such as Sure Biochem Laboratories can help you determine what government regulations apply to your cleanroom and what class is needed for your process. Of course, costs are one of the biggest factors to consider when creating a cleanroom for pharmaceuticals. A great practice is to develop a concept study or engineering study to model the potential costs of the clean room. A clean room in the pharmaceutical industry is a delicate space that cannot be taken lightly. That's why receiving professional help to calculate costs, review options, and set up your clean room could be your best bet. Sure Biochem Laboratories is here to help by providing results you can be sure of. Be sure to get your quote today.